Hi, folks. Thanks for logging on. Lee Diffie and James Hinchcliffe with you to talk about the NTT IndyCar series. And Hinch, I know that you would be the first to agree that there has been so much happen in the series this year. Uh, Fernando Alonso coming back to do uh, his second Indianapolis 500. The recent news of Jimmy Johnson, who's going to be a part of the NTT IndyCar series for the next two years. There's been young guys doing well. They're, we've got a 40-year-old veteran in Scott Dixon headed towards his sixth championship. And the news just keeps on coming this week. However, you're not reporting on the news. You're part of the news with the announcement made official today that you will partake uh, in the last three races of this season for Andretti Autosport, the team that you had already done three races with uh, this year, taking over the Gainbridge Honda of Zach Veach. Uh, where do you want to start? Congratulations. I know you, you feel for Zach, but you're still a competitor yourself. So uh, it's a great opportunity for you. Well done. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, certainly to uh, to have gotten the call to uh, to fill in was was huge. You know, I, I had known for a long time that my 2020 season was going to consist of three races. And, and even despite all the challenges of 2020, the three races I was supposed to do all happened, you know, as they were supposed to. And, you know, I, I'd kind of come to terms with that and was at peace with that. And to get this opportunity now to uh, to do three more for the team is great. You know, it's uh, stepping into the 26 and representing Gamebridge and Honda and, and Michael and everybody at Andretti Autosport you know, it's obviously a, a huge result for me and something I'm very happy about. Um, as you said, though, you know, no doubt, I, you never want to earn a ride at the expense of somebody else, you know, in the sense that uh, that has happened with here with Zach. And, you know, I, I feel bad that he's, you know, not able to kind of see out the last three races of, of his season. And I, I got a lot of respect for him on and off track. You know, he's, he's been a teammate this year. He was a colleague for years before that. But honestly, he was a friend for years before that still. And I, I've got a lot of time for him and his family. And, uh, I, I understand a little bit, you know, what it's like in that position and, and what he's going through. So just obviously wish him the best. And now the focus just kind of has to switch to uh, to Harvest GP and just trying to get the best results for the team. Yeah, you mentioned the Harvest GP that's coming up on the first weekend of October uh, next weekend. Really looking forward to that. It couldn't have played out better as far as the three races that are coming up because the Harvest GP is the final double header uh, of the year. You raced at the Indy GP earlier this year. And then you go to where you had your very first victory in IndyCar racing on the streets of St. Petersburg. It, it lays out pretty well, doesn't it? It's not, it's not a bad lineup for sure. You know, the, the fact that this was the one track that I've, I've been on, you know, road course uh, style so far this season is, is great. Obviously, the other guys have had a, a bunch more road courses and uh, a bit more experience over the season than I have. But uh, it's, it's nice to go back at least somewhere. It'll be my first double header of the year. All the other events were, were single events for me. Uh, and then St. Pete, you know, nobody's been on a street circuit uh, so far this season. And, and obviously this is a, a track that I really enjoy. Like you say, got my first win there a few years ago. And uh, it'd be great to just go back and, and have another solid event. It's going to be weird being back there. I mean, we were all there poised and ready to go to open the season off when the pandemic really hit and everything shut down. It was Friday of St. Pete weekend. So I think a lot of people are kind of excited to go back there and for us, it's almost a, it's a bit of closure, you know, it's like, no, we, we still did it. We still got this season going and, and we got this season finished and, and we're able to put on a, a bunch of great races for the fans, which ultimately is what it's all about. You talk about closure. I want to talk about opening. Can we read more into this? Is this an opening for a return to a full-time ride in 2021, perhaps? Who knows? You know, obviously for me, the the plan from January 2020 was already working on on 21 and, and trying to be in a full time program. And you know, I've I've really enjoyed being reunited with Andretti Autosport and everybody there is uh, has been so supportive. It's it's been it's been a very fun year for me on track. You know, it's been uh, kind of a breath of fresh air in a lot of ways. And it's uh, it's certainly the the place I want to be moving forward. And uh, we've been working on that. We're working on those those conversations. You know, Genesis has been an incredible partner in my three races up to this point. We'll be representing Gamebridge primarily, but Genesis will still have a, you know, a, a position on our car in the last three. And yeah, I mean, I guess if I go out and win all three, it'd be hard for them to say no, right? <laughs> exactly. Do you know, we've spent a lot of hours on air together this year, uh, commentating whether you've been in the booth with myself and Paul Tracy or, or your role on pit lane, which you've excelled at. You've done a terrific job. But the one thing I've been remiss to ask you is, you have never had a year like this. So it doesn't matter if it's basketball, baseball, football, whatever. To have a retired athlete uh, come into the broadcast booth or part of the broadcast team is, is not unusual. It's highly usual. It's typical. But you haven't had a year like this in your career. When you've got injured, you've sat out and you've watched the, your competitors and your peers and your friends race, but then you've come back to a full-time ride. You've never had a partial season of partially broadcasting, partially driving. What's it been like? 
it's it's been it's been very interesting it's been busy you know it's been great to still be at all the indie car events and still feel very much you know part of the community and part of the series and it's been phenomenal working with everybody at NBCSN and you know yourself Townsend Paul every everybody behind the scenes has made it so easy for a rookie with no real experience or frankly right to be there you know to, to step into that role and it's it's always very interesting to watch the races from that perspective. You know, you can go home and watch them on TV. And I think I think collectively we do a pretty good job at telling those stories. But there is obviously so much that happens behind the scenes and so much that doesn't make it to air. And so from from this role, I've learned a lot, you know, just watching how certain drivers races unfold, what works, what doesn't. You get a, a much more in-depth view of every single race that's happening on that track not just the top two or the top five and uh and so it's been educational in a lot of ways but you know it's uh like i said it's certainly 2021 is the, the hope to be back full-time no offense uh and hopefully maybe you know one day down the road we can uh, we can reprise our uh, our work together in, in the indycar side of things with NBCSN. I know that you haven't stopped training you're at pit fit every day you're training like you are driving full-time so uh, fitness check that box is checked no problem will you be ready to step back into the car is it going to take a little while or because you've done the three races this year you, it'll just be business as usual and the three races definitely helps you know i think the the big challenge is just the condensed race weekend you know you go in there and with one practice straight into qualifying straight into that first race uh this is something that the other drivers have had obviously a bit of experience with now this season uh, but also the the, the flow of that first practice, working with your engineer, understanding what needs to actually be accomplished, where you need to really lay your focus in that in that really truncated time, that's going to kind of be where the disadvantage comes. But, you know, physically, yeah, I, I've stayed training on the same program as, as all the other guys at Pit Fit. It's actually kind of funny. It was last week I had finally given up hope that I was going to be in the Harvest GP because up to this point, there was a chance that maybe we were going to put together, you know, a program for the 29 car to be back on track. And about last week, I I'd sort of resigned that that wasn't happening. And I told my trainer, hey, if you want to shift my training a little bit, I think we're probably done for this year. And three days later, you know, this call comes. And so I'm I'm glad we didn't make that decision too early and, and kind of take me off the uh, the IndyCar driver training regimen. But no, I, I feel great physically. Uh, obviously, the team is is very prepared and they're going to get me up to speed as, as quickly as possible. That first session is going to be a you know, a, a bit of a rude awakening and jumping in the deep end a little bit, but you know, I'm excited and uh, I can't wait to get back in the car. People will always um, use the words uh, resilience, determination, uh, drive when they talk about you, particularly with your comeback after your big crash at, at Indianapolis uh, several years ago. What has this exercise taught you about resilience? Is, is this reward for, for your persistence? Um, yeah, I mean, you could look at it that way for sure. I look at it as, as opportunity, you know, because this is a, a great opportunity for me to, you know, continue to show that I've still got what it takes and should be there, you know, hopefully full time next year on the grid. And uh, we've had some, we've had some strong races this year. We've had some issues in those races for sure. But uh, I think as a, as a group, the performance has been pretty good for uh, for a part time effort. And you know, I think in all of these moments in life where things seem like, you know, hurdles and roadblocks and, and all the rest of it. There's a lot to be learned from them. I came out of my accident. You know, if you fast forward six months after the wreck, I, I had a lot of positives that I took out of that journey. Um, they came at a price, no doubt, but I came out of it a better person. And I think through, you know, the end of 2019 and, and what 2020 has brought, I've had some really cool opportunities. I've had uh, some really cool experiences. And I think I've learned a lot. I think I've grown a lot. And I just look at this as, you know, another another chapter in the story. So hopefully we can kind of end 2020 on a high note and uh, and roll that momentum into the into next year. Got to let you go. We're almost out of time. I know you've got a lot to do, but quickly, I think it was at the Indy 500. Marty Snyder described it as eerie or, or something like that. Are we going to see the hinch? uh the the mask with the uh, the beard and the serious face is that making a comeback we're going to see that in pit lane again you know i had a lot of people text me that their children didn't sleep that night so <laughs> I, I might retire it uh but i might not we'll see watch this space it might come back all right well congratulations we do say that we um uh we wish zach veach all the best in wh whatever the future holds for him he's a talented young driver um you know motorsport has many twists and turns pardon the pun but it does as you well know uh, but congratulations, James. I know I speak on behalf of all of your fan base because there's a lot of people uh, so pleased about this news and to see you uh, back in the pit lane for the final three races of the NTT IndyCar Series. Well done. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.